The first step to editing your image in GIMP is to open it. Go to File, Open, and click on the folder where your master filter images are stored. Make sure you're using the aligned ones. Select all the master fil filter images by hitting Shift and selecting them all. Click Open. A new window will pop up called Load Fits Files. Accept the default option by clicking Open. You're going to have to repeat this for each image. Once you have opened all four images, you'll see them appear at the top bar. They also all mostly look like black squares. We have to do something called stretching to bring out the detail. To do this, we're going to be using linear and nonlinear stretching techniques, which is under colors. The linear stretching will be done with levels. Levels, you'll see three triangles. You want to move the middle triangle all the way over to just touch the left one. This is the first step. It's going to make your image look washed out, but don't worry. We're going to keep doing this process until we get the detail we want. Go back to Colors and click Levels again. You'll now notice that there is a little packet of information in the center. You want to put your, it between your leftmost slider and your middle slider. Again, now it will be darkened, but it will still might look a little washed out when you move that middle slider closer. You can start to do more fine tuning at this point, but still keep it rough. Press OK, and if you'd like, you can still continue to do colors and then hit levels and do some more uh, moving of these, the farthest one and the middle one. I usually leave the rightmost alone as that's the white point of the whole image, and it really just washes out the whole image if you move it too close to that information packet in the middle. Once you have a rough uh, idea of what you like, we can do more fine tune stretching with our nonlinear stretching tool called Curves. So go to Colors and hit Curves. This is going to come up with a chart and a line down the center. Now you can pull at any point of these lines up or down to change the darkness or lightness of each kind of area uh, in the image. I like to bring the beginning part of the line more towards the bottom and then the upper part of the line higher to make that area brighter. This will also give you more control over the darkness and highlighting the light spots as opposed to what we did with levels. Once you've done that and you're happy with what your image looks like, you want to repeat this for all the other images that you have. So you'll have four stretched images in total. Don't worry if they're not perfect. We can, we can refine them more when we combine them together. This is also an interesting point to really look at what detail shows up with each filter. As you can see, the first filter we did was luminance, so it captured all the light, and then the second one we're doing is hydrogen alpha, which still has quite a bit of detail, but as we move on to the oxygen and sulfur filters, it doesn't seem to have as much of the object prominent in it. So I encourage you to take note while you're doing this what you've noticed differently when you are adjusting the levels or the curves on each image, what you had to do to bring out the detail uh, at this point. Once you have stretched your individual images and are happy with how they look, it's now time to add color and combine them. For this, I'm just looking through each of my images and seeing how the different filters captured the target differently. To color eyes and combine them, go to Color, Components, and Compose. Now this will open up a dialog box where we'll have to assign a image to each color channel. In this case, we are using narrowband, so we're going to reference the Hubble palette in your student resources. Soft will be red, hydrogen alpha will be green, and oxygen will be blue. So going back to GIMP, we are going to assign under that dialog box that popped up, uh, just check if it's minimized, if it went away, and putting red to make sure it's sulfur, and then we're going to assign the hydrogen alpha image to the green channel, and the oxygen image to the blue channel, and click OK. After loading, you should have a color image. Pretty incredible, eh, that we got that out of just black and white photos. So this might not look exactly what you want, and it's not done yet. We need to add the luminance layer. You're going to navigate to your luminance layer, click Control A, Control C, and then go back to your colored and click Control V. You can change the name of the layer you just pasted to Loom. And you're also going to change the mode from normal, so it's covering it, and to 
luminance. This is going to tell GIMP that this is the luminance layer and it's to add darken and lighten as necessary. You can also change the opacity to the way you want. Next I'm moving on to playing around with the different tools in GIMP to edit the photo the way I would like. Now when I'm doing this I'm making sure I'm not have the luminance layer highlighted but the one below it. There's different features you can do color balance, you can do a brightness and contrast, you can go back into your curves and levels, which is one of my favorite things to do to really refine my image. You can also look online to see what other people have done as well. Now we notice that there's only a small part of this image I actually want, so I'm going to go up to the crop uh, tool in and crop just the part of the image I would like. When I've done that, I can go to view and center and then zoom in so I get a better view of this area of the image that has the part of the target I want. Making sure that I am not still clicking on the crop tool or you might crop your image further. From here, now that I can see the target a little bit better, I can go back to levels, again, continue to play around. This is where you can make the image your own. It's also probably where you're gonna spend the most time on this process because it's really just trial and error. Undo is your best friend in this situation. You can also go under filters, there's under filters there is a noise reduction option, you might find some interesting features or results from that as well. And as I said, you can always go to edit undo or control Z if you don't like what you did. I also like going back and forth between uh, undoing and redoing to see the difference of that um, change that I just made. One thing to note when you are editing the curves or levels is you can actually edit each individual color channel uh, by themselves. So here I've changed to green and I'm only affecting the green layer or color channel. And every time I have changed one particular color channel, I'm always clicking OK after before I go back into levels or curves to adjust another channel. So in this case I'm doing the red and after I'm done the red I can go on to the blue. As you can see here, you can really get some more fine detailed refinement or how you exactly want the colors to show up in your picture. This is where I personally focus on the most, how the colors affect and bring out different details in the image. I also find it extremely helpful to use a reference photo. In this case, I was just looking at what the Hubble image looked like and the different colors they used. And now I'm going back to my image and seeing kind of how I can get a similar color because I liked what it looked like. I also wanted to note that the Hubble image is a very, very zoomed in version of the one we are looking at. But it's always good to have a reference image. You can Google uh, the target and astrophotography and look at different astrophotographers' work and how they adjusted it. Now, just remember, because you're using different equipment, we've had different exposure times, different amount, it's never going to look exactly the same. It's going to look unique to you. I'm also going back here and just changing the opacity of the luminance layer because I've realized I kind of like it when the image is a little bit darker, so I've made the opacity about 70%. Finally, one of the most important things we have not reviewed yet is how to save. Go to File, Save, and save your GIMP file. This is an editable file in GIMP. You can also export it as a PNG by going File, Export, and the default will be PNG, but you just put any suffix of the file type you want, put a unique name, and then save it where you would like when you are all done. You can then just hit export and accept the standard settings. And once it's all done, you have your image you can add into your lab report. And congratulations, you have just finished editing your first astrophotography image.